I'd like to call the meeting to order for Monday, May 16th, 2016. Please rise for the pledge. Mike Morgan will lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Our most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for your mercy, your love, your blessings of life, and for life itself. Father, we thank you for this opportunity for this board uh, to discuss the goings on of this city. And we pray, Lord, that any action taken tonight will be best for this city and its citizens. Now go with us and watch over us. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, next item on the agenda is approval of minutes. I entertain a motion to approve the minutes from May 2nd, 2016. Okay. Motion from Mike Morgan. Is there a second? Second. Second from Robert Taylor. Any discussion? Uh, Mayor, I have a question, please. Okay. About the minutes from the last meeting. It has to do with the um, bid for the replacing the standard drive with VFD to work with SCADA system, budgeted $18,000, a variable frequency drive yes, sir. Uh, for number 10 well. Uh, I noticed there were two bids that were fairly close. One was within two, maybe Greg can answer this. They were within $200. One of them is a, a local concern, and the other is an out-of-town concern, industrial controls and electric. Who, were the, who was the higher bidder bid? Okay, Industrial Controls is a local company as well. They are, they're located in Dyersburg? Both, yes. Both companies are in Dyersburg. Industrial Controls and Electric is out in the- Oh, I thought Industrial, industrial Controls was an out of town firm. And no, they were in Dyersburg. Okay, and there's $200 difference in the bid and the, the, the quest, uh, your comment was that uh, Industrial controls the higher bid is the same brand as all other equipment, and the uh, ultimate, uh, the other one was the alternate brand. Is that correct? That's right. It, but it wouldn't work. It it would work. Uh, industrial controls and electric bid the same as the alternate brand. They they bid sent in two bids, um, and their alternate brand bid was twenty two thousand. <laughs> but to keep the equipment the same, and uh, way up. I don't know much about so, electricity, but or electric components. But uh, from what I understand, the Allen Bradley is the Cadillac, which is what we have out there. And the other alternate brand, it may be good, but it's not standard with what we have out there in the, the rest of the field. So uh, uh, that's the, why he wanted to go with the, the the company that bid the alternate brand. They had the same specs as the one that got the the bid which was higher and they just did not bid on the uh, same brand as other equipment. Is that correct? That or is correct. Well, where, tell me where industrial controls and electrics located in Dyersburg? Uh, they're out in the industrial park. I'm not sure exactly where. On industrial road, kind of close to uh, uh, been past, been Irmco, Dallas, huh? past Irmco on industrial road. They've been here a while? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. No, sir. I don't they know. Have, they're the one that did put our uh, airport lighting in back in 2008 okay. or whenever that was. Thank you, I appreciate that. I, I, I just didn't understand and I noticed that there was some difference and, and in they the did, bid. They, had the, they, they bid the alternate brand as well at 22,000, which we, we could have taken if, uh, but Jeff wanted to stay with the, the same standard. Any particular system? reason? Because it was better equipment. Better equipment mm -hmm. or something like we've had? No, so, so nobody questioned that, okay, except Jeff. Is that right? Uh, as far as I know, okay. nobody. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it, Mayor. Thank sure. You. All right. Any other questions? Have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business? <coughs> new business. Uh, I passed out a new agenda. We added one item to your agenda, and that was item D, uh, which came out of the public or, or came out of the Planning Commission meeting last Thursday. Uh, so your original agenda had A, B, C for notices of public hearings, and now your new agenda has A, B, C, and D for notices of public hearings. So that's the only difference with the agenda is that we added item D, uh, which you see is a notice of public hearing uh, to uh, amend the Dysburg Municipal Zoning Map. So the first four items under new business, notice of public hearing, 
to be held on June 6th, a resolution to annex territories west of the Dyersburg corporate limits property located on the radio road. Item B, notice of public hearing on June 6, 2016, <coughs> is an ordinance to zone territories west of the Dyersburg corporate limits property located on radio road to PB, planned bis plan business district. Then item C, notice of public hearing to be held on June 6, 2016, a resolution adopting a plan of service for air to be annexed into the city of Dyersburg, Tennessee, property located on Radio Road. So those first three notices of public hearing deal with the same uh, issue that came before the Planning Commission Thursday that was approved by Planning Commission, so we're calling for a public hearing on those. And then item D also came to the Planning Commission on Thursday, and that's notice of public hearing to be held on June 6, 2016, in ordinance to amend the Dyersburg Municipal Zoning Map to rezone properties near, near Hillcrest Avenue and Parkview Street from R3 High Density Residential District to HM Hospital Medical District. So at this time, I'd entertain a motion. We can do them individually and talk about them, or we can do them as a whole and talk about them, whatever the pleasure of the board is. Mayor, could I ask a question? Yes, uh, yes sir. The uh, Radio Road property, uh, does that come under any of the uh, new annexation laws that have been passed uh, recently? Yes, sir, it does. And we actually had a request from the owners of the property to be annexed. So we are not, we are not taking that property. We have a letter on file from the owners of that property asking the city to annex them into the city. Okay. What about the plan of services for that area? The plan of services basically is what we have to do as well. There's already, I understand, water on that property. Sewer have to be extended at the cost of the developer to the property line, the far property line at the cost of the developer. And then obviously the other thing, the streets, streets are already there, police, fire, and all that stuff. So Okay. Thank you. And that's for the, the next meeting then, June. Yes, sir, June, June 6th. 6th. Okay. Um, okay, I have another question about um, this this the question about, oh, you hadn't talked with the public hearing tonight on this other one, have you? No, sir. Okay. So I have a question about it. So A, B, and C all relate to the same project. Uh, anybody, I'd entertain a motion to. So move. I right, have a, a motion to uh, approve a notice of public hearing on the A, B, and C for June 6th. Is there a second? Second. I have a second from Kevin Cheney. Discussion? Yeah, Mayor, there's, a, there's several things on here that the Planning Commission has taken up and I appreciate them getting them in and out because I know developers are in a hurry, but is there any way we could get an email uh, what's headed to the Planning Commission so when someone has a concern on it, at least, you know, we, you know, we will have a little information on it, you know, as it's coming toward us? Sure. We, have, we send an agenda out uh, on Tuesday prior to the Thursday Planning Commission meeting to all the Planning Commissioners and we can include that uh, as far as what's on the agenda and the recommendation from the state planner, we can do that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, a, B, and C, we've got a motion and a second. Mm. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> motion passes. Then item D, notice of public hearing. Uh, I read that earlier, no, uh, an ordinance to amend the zoning map. I'd entertain a motion to approve that public hearing. So moved. A motion from Carolyn Norman. Is there a second? Second. Second from Kevin Cheney. Any discussion? I got a question. Are there existing homes on these lots, or does this entertain more than one lot? Or I'll, I'll defer to Thomas. Can we get some maps like we used to get on these? Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we don't see that anymore. And if so, are they going to carry this, put this under one deed, or how is that going to work? No, sir, it's actually two individual lots, and there are homes on both lots at the current time. Is the plan to tear them down, I'm sure? They're, they're not divulging that right now to us. They've, they've just asked to be rezoned to HM. So we're rezoning two lots? It's got residents on it now? Yes, sir. It says near uh, Hillcrest and near Hillcrest and Parkview. Park. But just exactly, is it on Hillcrest or Parkview? Well, they're actually on Hillcrest, and I believe the, the ordinance goes out. To, uh, to, it gives a little bit more specifications to where it's located. And, and what we were discussing a minute ago, when we send this out to the planning commissioners, they get the maps. So I'll be glad to include that with, with your packet as okay. well. Uh, you don't know the address is where they are, if they're mm -hmm. halfway down Hillcrest, or they buy the apartments on Hillcrest? Yes, or? sir, I, I've got that information. They're, they're closer to the, 
Uh, well, they're actually, a, and I've got a map if you'd like to look at it, but um, they're closer to the uh, Parkview uh, intersection. But they will be adjoining HM property already. Yeah. Actually, I did not bring it because I didn't think we'd be discussing that tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Right. But uh, it is, they are uh, adjacent to the Parkview side, and there are residential. So if you, turn, if you go down Parkview, turn on Hillcrest. Turn on Hillcrest. It's going to be on the left. Be on the left. Yes. Across from the fire station. Uh, Put it, first yeah. two lots, I believe, on the left yeah. that, are, that have houses on them. So the request is to, to do it. Uh, uh, to re make it HM, which is comp comparable to other yeah. uh, properties in that area for medical? Yes, sir. It'll, it'll, it'll be attaching to HM zone. Okay. Just be extending the HM zone out a little bit further. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, then the first public hearing, item E. Uh, we called for it at the last meeting. Ordinance BB649, an ordinance to amend the Dysburg Municipal Zoning Map to rezone properties <coughs> near Lake Road and Connell Avenue and Finley Street from B3 Central Business and B2 General Trade and Business to R2 Medium Density Residential District. Uh, that ordinance, I think, uh, was included in your agenda. I think the gentleman that uh, came before the Planning Commission is here uh, in the audience. I'd entertain a motion to approve this. Uh, so can you give us a just where, exactly where this is? It's it's Connell and Finley and where uh, near I'll, I'll Lake defer. Road. Uh, it, it faces Lake Road. Faces Lake Road. Yes, and Connell. <clears throat> oh no. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. It, it actually faces Lake Road. Uh, we give you is the that an empty lot that's there now? Yes, sir. Okay, there's no home. Um, no, there's no homes on it, it's just an empty lot. Okay. Right. And you're changing it to, uh, to B, uh, from a B2 to an R2. To an R2, okay. Mm -hmm. What, uh, uh, it's from a business to some sort of residential, so you could, apartments or? Well, technically they could, they could build uh, the same structure as they want to build on the B2. The reason they're asking for it to be changed to an R2 is because their set, setbacks are less. Okay. So instead of building three, and if I'm speaking out of turn, please correct me, but instead of being able to build three structures, they should be able to build four. So may we approve? Have a motion, is there a second? Second. Second from Robert Taylor, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Item F, public hearing. Ordinance BB650, an ordinance to amend the Dysburg Municipal Zoning Map to rezone properties near Harrell Avenue and Phillips Street from M2 Medium Industrial to B2 General Trade and Business District. Uh, and again, these last four all have gone through the Planning Commission uh, and were recommended by the Planning Commission to the board. So, so tell us where this is. Yes. Uh, this is uh, where is it? Harrell and Phillips. It's a Adjacent to the cotton mill property, it's across the street. From the resident, uh, is it where the old service station was yes, on sir. the corner there? Yes, sir. That's actually what initiated the, the rezoning request. Uh -huh. And the two properties uh, north of that and three properties uh, north. Okay. west of that are included in this. There's five, oh. I think five total uh, okay. that are asking to be rezoned. To B2, General Trade and Business District. Okay. So they're currently M2, they're going to ask to be rezoned to okay. B2. And uh, we have written requests from all the Approved members. by the Planning Commission. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, recommendation. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So move. Motion from Bob Kirk. Is there a second? Second. Second. Bill Eskew, any discussion? Tom, I that, that corner right there you're talking about on Harold and Phillips, where that service station is. I've been hearing what's going in there. They've discussed about the parking that's going to be there and everything. Uh, I've explained to them the situation. They would not be able to block the view of traffic. Uh, mm -hmm. So however they arrange their vehicles, they'll have to put them back off the right of way and out of the view of traffic. Are, th are they gonna be a new building or? No, sir. No, not to my knowledge, they're not. They're gonna use the existing building. Use the existing. Uh, what about that property behind it, that ratty looking building? The uh, business behind them, uh, as far as I know, they have no intentions of doing anything with it right now. The, the B2 actually opens up uh, the ability for them to grow. There's a large parcel of property in the surrounding area that's asking to be rezoned um, that potentially will never be industrial. It's not large enough. It's not positioned properly, uh, it, but it does open up their opportunity for expansion and growth. And I think that's why they're asking for rezoning. 
Any other questions? We have a motion and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Next item, G, public hearing, May 16, 2016. Ordinance number BB651, an ordinance amending the text of the Dyesburg Zoning Ordinance by amending the R1AC district permitting single family dwellings and condominium dwellings. What is the difference in the uh, text of it currently? I don't know why he keeps sitting down. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got, as far as the difference, we've made two changes. Uh, if you look on there, there's a change on, I'm gonna, I, let me read it instead of just guessing. Um, and this was requested by the owner of some of the condominiums. Uh, there's, there's been a change that says on the side yard line, non-attached side was put up underneath there. And then on the, the back sheet, I believe, or maybe it's a little closer. It's a single lot at 5,000 square foot. That was added as well. And the purpose for this is they would like to be, have the ability to sell off the condominiums as single units. And currently the way the ordinance is written, they, they can't get some type of financing that they're looking for to do that. So they have to be broken out into single uh, dwellings to do that. And that, that is in a particular area that you had request, is it? Yes, sir. We only have one condominium zone in, in Dyersburg. Okay. And the owner of those w was asking for the result, with a change of the text. Can you, can you tell us where the location is or anything? Or yes, it's over on the back side of the farms. Uh -huh. It's on Fairway Drive. Okay. Um, it's owned by Mr. David Alexander currently. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's the only place that we have condo zoning today. For, for zone, okay. Yes, sir. So moved. Motion from Bob Kurtz. Is there a second? Second. Second from Carolyn Norman. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Uh, the next item, item H, public hearing, ordinance BB 652, an ordinance to establish Thomas Avenue as a one-way street. I passed out a map from our JS department, uh, and I'm gonna uh, defer to Robert Taylor Jr. This was a quick request he brought to us, um, and Robert can explain that. So Robert, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, I've been getting a lot of calls about how small the road was and um, getting off Thomas, getting on to Roberts, so close to the track, you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of close calls there. Um, so a lot of people wanted to uh, change it to uh, a one-way street. We've, we've uh, why, I, mean, I have a question about why do we have to enact an ordinance to do that when we've made some one-way streets around here before without, in the absence of establishing an ordinance, I think. I know we did Church Street in front of the post office. Yeah. We didn't enact yeah. an ordinance, we just did it. Yeah, we did. Uh, no, no, we didn't. Uh, the other board did in about 1991, I believe, but the uh, uh, procedure that we want to follow to be proper is establish an ordinance to do that and call for a public hearing. We're required to yes, sir. have an ordinance in. We are now, yes, sir. Now. I don't know about back then, but oh, we are now. The back then, we just did whatever we wanted to, right? No, I, I, don't, I wasn't here. Yeah, I, I know we did, because I was here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But the map, um, uh, and, okay. and the chief and I have talked about it. We've been out there. Uh, so as you come down Cedar, you come up to the railroad tracks, cross over the railroad okay. tracks, you turn right mm -hmm. onto Thomas. So the right. one-way street will be going south on Thomas. Uh, and that fits the natural flow of traffic from those houses that are adjacent there on, at Thomas and Roberts. Uh, you know, and of course, we will notify all the fire, uh, ambulance service, everybody needs to be notified. The street department will put up signs and uh, we'll do that effective. Um, well, we'll pass tonight, it'll be effective, but probably I don't next have a problem sometime. with it. I just didn't know why we had to pass an ordinance to do it. But, but we, we got a book full of them, so we just need to know, I guess. That's right. Mm. Any questions about this? Is anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this? Okay. I'll entertain a motion for this. So moved. Motion from Carolyn Norman. Is there a second? Second. Second for Robert Taylor Jr. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is attorney invoice that was attached. The attorney invoice in the amount of $3,825. I'd entertain a motion to approve that. Moved. Motion from Mike Morgan, second from Kevin Cheney. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Next item, J. Bids, Greg Williams. Greg? Good 
bid I have tonight is for the water plant. It's to rebuild the pump at the Bruce floodgate. Uh, this was not a budgeted item, it, but it will come out of the repair and maintenance. Um, this was an emergency repair and uh, was uh, repaired by Industrial Maintenance and Engineering of Nashville for $26,800. So I recommend a, approving payment for that amount. Per the recommendation from Greg, entertain a motion to approve this. So move. Motion from Robert Titus, our second. Second. Second from Carolyn Norman. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Somebody. This is not the same company we were just talking about a few minutes ago, is it? No. It's a different one. Yes. No, this one. This is out of Nashville. This out of Nashville. Right. Who made it an emergency? Yeah. How do you constitute what it constitutes an emergency? Well, the way the um, Bruce community is protected is by the, the levee down there. The majority of the time, the floodgates are up. The rain that falls in there flows out into the river. Uh, that's the last flood that we had. As the river comes up, they have to close off the floodgates. And then any water that falls in the community runs down, can't go through the floodgates, so it has to be pumped up out of there into the river. Um, this pump malfunctioned. It wouldn't pump, so we had two trailer-mounted pumps that we have that was doing all they could to pump the water over the levee. And uh, so we called this company who's worked on stuff like this in the past. They came down, had to take part of the roof off, get a crane, pull it out before they even knew what was wrong with it, take it back to Nashville, rebuild the bottom of the pump, bring it back, set it back in the same way. Are they the only people that around here that do that? Why did you call them? I mean, I asked him that question. I don't know that they're the only people around here, but they're the people that we found that gave us the best price and uh, did the best work. Uh, does it, it seems to me like if you want to spend $26,800 and it's an, an emergency, you can call a committee meeting in about two hours and get somebody to talk about it I mean, before I you spend that kind of money. It. That's what I'm saying. But we didn't know what was wrong with it until you pull it out. I mean, it's not a... It's, it's down in the ground. There's, you oh, yeah. can't tell what's wrong with it. All you know is you either. So you just call somebody to come down here and pull it out, and then y'all decide how much money to spend on it, right? That's the only way you can Did do. they give you a price before they did it or after they did it? They couldn't. They didn't know what was wrong. So you don't know what a competitor might give you a price on. Mm -hmm. So we just spend $26,800 without any committee being involved. Y'all just made that decision. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. I mean, your your option is to fix it or don't fix it. Huh? I mean, you've got the option to fix it or don't fix it, but uh, I know I'm not questioning that. <laughs> is this the only company that's ever worked on pumps for the city? I don't, I don't know that. Anybody that they've else? ever done it. I know they had worked on several in the past for us. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Motion, motion carries. Uh, next item. Thank you, Greg. Next item on the agenda report from all of them. Bob Kirk? Uh, yes, Mayor. I've got another item or two here. Um, I read here where the uh, state of Tennessee, uh, the sales tax receipts uh, were 8.46% higher than in April of 2015. Uh, the uh, Finance Commissioner Larry Martin uh, announced that uh, they're way ahead of last year and I just wonder how that what that results in our sales tax uh, revenue for the city of Dysburg. Can y'all anybody tell me? I'm going to defer to Steve Anderson. I mean it, you, there, it's way ahead the state says it's way ahead and it, wouldn't you think that we'd be considerably ahead? Should be. We just don't know. Can you find out for us? Let us know. Thank for the month of April or through well, year I'd to like day? To know for the, I okay. know it's been increasing over the There's a two month period. lag before we get the reports, right? Okay. We'll we'll get the year to date information. Okay. We'll Thank do that. Oh the other question I've got is uh, uh, is Okina gonna be open for Memorial Day? That's my understanding it is, yes sir. They've been out there working since. Um, I know I've been seeing a lot of people out there work. I don't know exactly when we approved the bid, but they've had a full crew out there. Yes, sir. And so we're hiring lifeguards. We'll right be now. open by more. Yes, sir. We, we normally open by more. Yes, sir. 
I've had a lot of people want to swim on Memorial Day. So. Well, good. Good. Thank you, Mayor. That's all I have. Yes, sir. Bill? I don't have anything, Mayor. Mr. Glover? I don't have anything. Kevin? Yeah, I've had two calls from uh, people that live around my district, and I've had the same phone call myself from somebody claiming to be the IRS <laughs> and uh, well, needing you to – yeah, need you. Just, well, uh, you know, I th they don't call you on the phone. That's just it. It's a phone scam, and I want everybody to be careful. They'll find you if they need you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else? That's it. Mike? Uh, I'd just like to say that last week I seen, uh, uh, I think we got some trustees working in the city now picking up trash and stuff all around the city. So I appreciate Mr. McCullough getting those trustees for us and, yeah. and working. Appreciate it. Picked up how many bags last week? 22 bags around the city. When was that? Thursday and Friday downtown, we picked up 21, 21 55 gallon bags. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, thank you. That's all the stuff down there. Anything else, Mike? No, sir. Dennis? Uh, Mayor, I've had some calls from people about uh, when people mow uh, blowing grass clippings out in the street. Isn't there an ordinance against that? I don't think so. It's no, sir. Oh, okay, so you can do it and fill up the drains. Well, you're not supposed to. We'll pass an ordinance if you want well, to. Well, the reason I'm saying that, I mean, you know, uh, if they do it and they're filling up the drains, I mean, we should do something about it. Uh, so maybe the street department will look at that or Thomas? There's definitely not an ordinance in our property maintenance code. I do think it would fall up under stormwater. Uh, if they're blowing it out and it's washing down in the storm drains, uh, that would be a stormwater issue. Uh, right now, we don't have any, per se, ordinances against it. If there's somebody doing it, we need to talk to them, or Scott needs to talk to them to let us know who it is. We'll try our best. I will tell you, quite some time ago, they tried to pass an ordinance. Uh, it already was discussed uh, to prohibit that from doing it. Uh, but right now, I'm not, I'm not aware of an ordinance that we have in the property maintenance code. Something I guess we need to look at after, you know, you clean those out several times. Yes, sir. I agree, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll get with Scott in the morning and see if there's something stormwater. And another thing, it's that time of the year we've got so many lots that are overgrown again. And I know it seems like the same ones year after year that, you know, we have done. Evidently, we don't have any teeth in the ordinance or whatever there is or somebody's not enforcing it because it just keeps on and keeps on. we've got one over on paid it's about head high in fact i think you've got a marker already over there but you can't see it anymore because the grass is too high and uh, there's one on west wheeler that every year you know that goes on uh is there anything we can do to speed this process up because it's awfully slow and it looks to me like if somebody's already been cited about this two or three times, that there shouldn't be any go through all this again with it. That's right. Um, you know, we have this issue every year, quite honestly, of sending certified And it seems letters. like it's getting worse instead of better. It is getting worse. I, Thomas, I hate to defer to you again. We've talked about it numerous times, but. We've actually changed the process. Uh, we changed it last year, year before. And when it works, it works well. Uh, we've changed it through the attorneys, made sure it was legal. We send the property owners one notice a year. Okay, that's all they get at the beginning of mowing season. But the problem is they have to accept the notice. We have to find them with the notice. Uh, if they don't accept it, we have to wait the time it takes to come back. Now, saying that, once they've accepted that notice, we don't have to notify them again by mail. We'll go out there, we placard the yard. Ten days later, we can mow it. Uh, so that has that sped the process up. I agree with what you're saying. It's, it's getting worse every single year. It gets worse. I've been doing this for 20, doing this for 25 years. Uh, just like the yards are, are getting worse, and, and the other stuff is getting worse. Are right, well you saying they won't accept it? Are a lot of these in town, or are these out of town residents? Well, a, a, a lot of them. These lots are left to people that won't, don't want them. Uh, say, say grandma dies, and nobody wants that lot. So it just, it goes unclaimed. It goes into probate forever. Uh, it goes into foreclosure. Uh, <clears throat> there's a hundred different things I can sit here and tell you of why it's hard to contact someone. The good thing is once we're able to contact them, then we do away with the paperwork. We just post a yard. 10 days later, when the guys are available, they can mow it. Do we put a lien against the property then before it's sold, we get our money? Therein lies your problem. 
I think we've discussed it several, several times in meetings. Your problem is we need to figure out a way to collect. Well, if somewhere. we put a lien against the property, they can't sell it until the city gets their money. Putting a lien against it is not near as easy as what it sounds. It's, uh, it's costly to do it. Uh, there's other avenues that we can do. I think we've talked about it before. We can sue property owners. Uh, at the end of the season, we can gather them all up in one, one bunch and, and file suit against every single one of them. But just it just doesn't seem, of course, I know you say some of it works, but there's uh, problem properties around the city that every year it's the same thing and it's not working. Yes, sir. I, I agree with you. Like I said, I, I, I used to do lots a long time ago. Did them for a long time. Uh, and it's the same one systematically over and over and over. Hopefully, with the way we've got to mowing, and this would be more of a question for Mike than it would me, that we're going to be able to get on the schedule. I think Mike has really started lining this thing out. Mm -hmm. that we're going to be able to get on the schedule. The one you're talking about on paid, I got a complaint about it today. I talked to the, the lady today. It's ridiculous. That yeah. looks terrible. It is. If none of you seen it. You can't <laughs> miss it. You go down paid, and it's on the right hand side, and it's over your head. You know, I saw on the Memphis News where the, they got an environmental court down there, and the judge was absolutely throwing the book at them mm -hmm. over this. And, and, and I will tell you, uh, Judge Dedman has approached me here recently, and we're discussing it right now, doing the same thing here. I'm, I'm hoping it's going to happen. Of course, he's in full charge of that. It's his, his show. But he, he is. Uh, he talked about setting one up here. He but, did. Uh, and I'll tell you, just since we're here on the record, uh, Judge Dedman helps us tremendously. He is, he is strict. When we're able to get folks in the court, he, he helps us out tremendously. Uh, well, and another thing, I guess people need to call 311 when they see start seeing a problem on property like there, that. There's the problem. The, the public needs to know they need to call 311 the minute it gets nine inches. And just keep calling until something's don't done. Don't wait till it gets here. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't wait till it gets up here because the process takes a little bit. Yeah. When it gets over nine inches, call 311. Thomas, Thomas so our yeah. policy now is, <coughs> and correct me, we don't we don't stake it until it gets nine inches high. Is that right? We, we don't stake it. Right. And then you have to send a letter, and if they don't accept it, post office holds it, send it again for like three times? Three times, and then, and then after the third time, they hold it 15 days yeah. before they send it back to us. So by then, it's been a month or six weeks, no wonder, you know. That's right. And also, the, the mail system we're using, Pitney Bowles, depending on what day of the week it falls, it could be, it could be held up to seven days uh, through their office. Am I right on that, Kevin? So if it falls on a particular day, it could be six or seven days before it ever comes back due to the process. It's a timely process the first go round, but after the first go round, it should speed the process up dramatically. I would think. Uh, we just got to get them served that first time. But once again, I don't know how they work their their office, but we do it on a complaint basis. As everybody here knows. Don't wait till it gets three foot tall before you call. Because by the time we get the process worked out, you're another month into it, like Mr. Morgan said. We saw Mike's guys over on St. John today, right. staking out or something they were doing over there on St. John with the tall uh, yard. Is there any way we could tell with, say, Memphis or whoever's already got this environmental court, what kind of turnaround they're looking by the time it becomes an issue, do they get it resolved? Sure. If, it, if it speeds it up, sure, I'd be glad to check. Anybody that. you can call. Sure. I think Judge Potter's an environmental judge in Shelby County. Yes, he is. I will tell you though that they have some of the same issues we have, uh, just on a lot larger scale. Yeah. But yeah, I'll be glad because I'm interested myself. And you I'll say be being sure. served, you're talking about through the mail, right? Certified mail, yes, sir. Can we not get a constable, sheriff, police, or somebody to serve those? Get a little quicker if they can find them. Uh, I mean, you can always turn mail down, but, you know, if somebody's knocking on your door and catches you out in the yard, you know. Well, and, and what we do on the code enforcement side, sometimes we have situations where we have to figure out alternative methods to do that as well. We almost had one here shortly. We had to use a constable, but there is a fee attached with that. So there's an additional fee uh, that you have to pay. And, and if I'm not mistaken, somebody can correct me, don't they get paid per trip? I think so. Yeah, I, think so. I was thinking so. Hey, we're doing we do hangouts now for utilities, mm -hmm. and we my guys are one to the other. We hang them out on the door. Matter of fact, we hung out about twenty five today, mm -hmm. and and whether they get it or not, if they're not in by Wednesday, we cut them off. I mean, can we not do a hangout for a lot? No, sir. We, no. We, we've been advised by the city attorney that we have to notify them by mail. That's the way the ordinance well, is set up. But we can hang one off and. You know, I guess we're cutting the water and gas off, but we can't 
hang out one tell them they need to cut the lot or it's been staked or whatever. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is, if we, if we look who we're going to mail it to, I mean, if they're local people, why couldn't we make contact maybe knock on the door or, mm-hmm. or call that person? And, you know. Well, uh, most of them, of course, we're talking about a lot of vacant lots. I assume we're talking about a lot of yes. vacant lots. Yeah. And a lot of these vacant lots are not local. Uh, when we did it, a tremendous amount of them were not local. Uh, so, therefore, you know, we have the same issues with enforcement, trying to get a police officer to serve somebody out of town. Uh, so, putting a hanger, it doesn't actually I'm not it. saying a hanger on the lot. I'm saying a hanger on if whoever owns that lot is local. Well, that's what I'm saying. The majority of them are not local. Not the, local. The vacant lots. Yeah. Now, the houses are, of course. Most of them. Yeah, there's, like I said, we've sped the process up a lot. It's just not yeah. where it needs to be yet. It are we still having problems problem. with the banks and foreclosed Tre- property maintaining those? Tremendous problems. Really? Because by the time, the way we have to do our process, by the time it gets to where it needs to be, they've already sold it again. Uh, these things, as you guys in real estate know, they sell so quick inside those foreclosures. And, and legally, uh, like tearing the house down, we have to make sure we legally serve mm-hmm. and notify someone, all people involved, as a matter of fact. Um, Kevin and I have spent months and months and months trying to track down people on houses. Um, but I'll check, uh, I'll check in the morning with Shelby County and Thank see if maybe they've got something that works better than we do. I hope so. If it's faster, it'd have to be better. Yes, sir. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Ms. Carolyn? Don't have anything. Robert? I don't have anything. All right, um, just a couple things. I'd like to uh, uh, make everybody aware that uh, this week is uh, National Public Works Week. It started yesterday through the 21st. There'll be a luncheon this Friday at the Neighborhood Activity Center for Public Works employees. Send an email out today to all the aldermen as well. So it'll be from 11 to 1 on Friday to recognize those folks. Also, this is National Police Week also, May 15th through 21st, and uh, passed out a couple of proclamations uh, in regard to those two uh, items. Yesterday actually was Police Officers Memorial Day to honor those, uh, to honor recognize those that have lost their life and service to their communities and uh, the chief and the staff here lowered, well all the city flags lowered to half staff yesterday in honor of that as a presidential declaration to do that. So I uh, certainly want to remember police department and what they do for our community and the public works folks and what they do for our community as well this week. Know the business, we're adjourned. Thank you.